all seem to know things I don't know. Do you know what I mean? So there you go. Hello and welcome to the West London Sport QPR podcast. I'm Dan Bennett. I'm joined by the usual lineup this week again of Kevin Gallant and Ian McCullough. Um, you know, sometimes we do these podcasts, lads, we're kind of not always a lot going on is there. We're kind of looking for what the main discussion point might be and we're kind of brainstorming about what we can talk about. But it's safe to say that I don't think this is uh, this is one of those times after the events of last week. Obviously, two games, two wins. But what we're going to start on and the biggest talking point, obviously, of last week was the speculation well, more than speculation around manager, head coach Mick Beal. Obviously, you'll know by now, you you who are listening, that he turned down the opportunity to go and speak to Wolves about the vacancy there. Um, in fact, let's just um, hear what he had to say about why he decided to, to turn that opportunity down. It, the, the fans, yeah, that meant bundles, you know, because obviously there's a lot of uncertainty. We started this project four months ago yesterday. I actually started on my first day and a lot of the fans wouldn't have known who I was and they had to take a leap of faith just like the ball did in me, and they've been absolutely magnificent. Uh, I think the people really close to me this week didn't panic, you know. Um, there's always talks and, and, and things in the background more than anybody would know. Everyone that knows the game inside it knows all these things happen and people call and are you interested in that, interested in that. I made a commitment here. I asked seven players to come and sign. I met them all face to face and asked them to join the club. There were some players who maybe could have moved on that I had to persuade him to stay in. I've brought two staff in myself. I've had to reshuffle things. I've asked for things from Amit and the rest of the board in terms of supporting me and changing some of the infrastructure. Hence, you're in this room and not that lovely big one you had before because we use that ourselves now. Um, 17 games is no time to judge a manager. It's no time to see if your ideas are being implemented and... Uh, I'm just a novice learning my job and, and it was important that I stayed here. The Premier League can wait for later if I'm good enough. I work there as an assistant. The plan is to try and go back there um, to help players go there as well. But all that's in the future. I think right now I'm just happy that that noise has gone away so that I can get back to my job. It has to be a right fit. You know, when, you, when I came here and I listened to the owners, I thought everything was a right fit and I thought that I could help them on their journey so you have to weigh everything up you have to look at the group of players when you make a commitment to people then you have to try and see that out and i didn't feel that i'd really even got started here uh, it's not about finance i've been in the game you know as a young coach all coming all the way through i've been at big clubs so there's no hesitation working at the with the with the top level players and at the top clubs but it's got to be right you have to make good decisions you have to stick to your commitments as well i think when you make a commitment to people and their family, I think you have to show that through. It was tempting, but um, no, I just think it will come in the future. I think everyone's looking to see if I can develop a style as a manager, how I am in the good and the bad times, can I manage for a whole season with the ups and downs. But no one's looking at that more than me. You know, there's certain things that I want to, which I'll keep, you know, private to me and my family. There's certain things I need to ask for myself. So uh, it was tempting. Um, but I, I'm really happy. Kev, okay, you heard from um, from Beal there. Obviously, he believed it wasn't the right time for him to go. That he made some commitments at QPR that he wanted to stick to, which is, you know, in football that's pretty admirable, isn't it? Because often that isn't the case. That is, you know, that doesn't happen, and people will go for the for the bigger job when it arises. But I mean, from what you were hearing last week, from you know when the news came out, did you think that it might be over? Having only just started, yeah, it looked that way. I was uh, pretty convinced after Wednesday night that he was going to leave, and then sort of a big turnaround the following day, and, and he stayed, which was which was um, a good decision for QPR and for the, for the supporters. It's a difficult one for him. He must have. He, he probably he might have been um, thinking, you know, I want to manage in the Premiership. I'm going to go Wolves. I know they're struggling at the moment. But this is a big opportunity for me. Also, a case of his wages would probably have quadrupled, I'd say. It's a lot of money to turn down. But he obviously thinks that QPR and himself have got a chance of getting promoted this season. And he, he's looked at, I think, if he sort of looked at the bigger picture. This is all, the reason why I'm thinking he stayed. He's looked at the bigger picture. He thinks, I've got a chance of getting promoted to QPR. I'll get a promotion on my CV. I'll take QPR up. I mean, he's, I think he's looking at his long-term uh, managerial career. 
where if he went to Wolves, there's a risk they get relegated. And you know what happens when you get relegated? You either get the sack, obviously, but when you get put, uh, relegated into the championship, if you don't start off flying, you usually come by September, October. So it's the he, he obviously thought it wasn't worth the risk and he thinks that QPR have got a real good chance. I'd also, it'd be interesting if we could find out as he had a discussion with the board and the owners of, is there going to be money available in January? I mean, that might have been a factor. They might have said, we'll back you in January if you if you think we need some players, which I still do. He said do. he spent most of Wednesday night talking to Les Ferdinand, the board, the owners even spoke to. So, I mean, you'd imagine that yeah, so, future plans would have come yeah. up, wouldn't it, at some point? Yeah, so they would have probably said, look, you stay, we'll back you in January if you what you need. So that could have influenced the decision. But all in all, it's, it's been a really good, uh, other than the Luton game uh, last week, the last two games, very good. Very good wins. Six points, top of the league. Happy days. Yeah, I mean, you should probably mention and keep our currently top of the league as well. I mean, you know, no, a lot's happened when I didn't even mention that in my little intro I did. So, but, you know, Kev, like you said there, it would have been very easy to think short term, Premier League job, you know, big wages, which, you know, it's not all about the money. But, you know, that is a big factor, isn't it? When, uh, when, when you yeah, get offered that, it's obviously difficult to turn down. But, it's massive for the players, isn't it, that he's decided to stick with them and be faithful because, you know, it can, they can use it as a boost, right? Because, you know, they're obviously already doing well, but it's a, big, is huge. It's, it's a big decision money-wise because I'm not being rude to anyone, but if anyone on, on, on this podcast, us three, or all the supporters uh, are watching it and you've been offered quadruple your money... To do the uh, same job at a different club, you yeah. know? What would they do? And I know loyalty in football, the only loyalty in football really is the fans. They're the, they're the loyal ones because they turn up every week. Look, we're all happy that he's staying. So, um, got a good team. They've got a good young team at QPR. Got a chance at the promotion because I think I said it last week or we spoke about it. They rank really, there is, there's no Fulham like last season or who were really outstanding. Bournemouth had a load of good players, didn't they? Shit, Nottingham Forest come good. There's no outstanding team at this moment other than can we be the outstanding team this season? Mm, and there's a few very good teams well, in there at the top. Well, but like you said. I say last, last week, I'm not going to get my head in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I ain't getting involved in that again. But, you know, the game on Saturday against Wigan didn't really play well, but managed to pick up the three points. And when you're winning games, when you're not playing well, that's a good sign. Yeah, do you think when we look back at the events of last week and the way it turned out, obviously for two, three days, it wasn't looking good at all. It was pretty worrying, you know, obviously keep your fans like yourself because you didn't want to lose the manager who's done such a good job already. But do you think looking back now, things are calm. It's like everyone's, it's kind of been a good thing. Everyone's come out of it quite well. You know, QPR have kept their manager, you know, I mean, from Beal's perspective, his name's out there, but also yeah. like for the players because they're like, well, he's stuck with us. So there must be something good here. Do you know what I mean? Well, Mick Bill has come out of, come out of it really good because there's no lo there's no real loyalty in football, unfortunately, and he's come out of it really well. Where he's saying, "No, I signed a contract at QPR. I want to see it through," and you see all the press coming out and say, "Oh, well done, what an admirable man, Mick Bill is." He's come out of it really well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Ian, you were there on Wednesday. I wasn't there, but you're in the press conference where it's kind of a strange situation where they win three 0 they've gone top of the league, and no one's talking about that because everyone's talking about the manager's future. But I mean, I know you were by the end of it sort of thinking he might go as well, but there were some signs in there. I remember you saying like, and I watched, obviously watched the video back that you took, but there were some signs there that, you know, he was hinting that it's not a foregone conclusion that, that he might stay. Yeah. I, I, at the end of it, I, I um, come out thinking, well, there's no guarantee he he's going to go. He didn't say he was staying. He didn't say he was leaving. Um, But, you're talking about a guy here who is, I don't think I've ever met anyone in football who is um, as confident as Mick Beale, but in a non-arrogant way. He's very, very aware of what he can do and what he does. Sure, is the word I'd use to in. describe And it. I think just stuff you read from players who worked with before, um, I mean, I've never been in a professional dressing room, so I don't, I don't know how players react to kind of, you know the style of a manager but he does seem to have a good relationship with all the players 
and we discussed before, man management in football is, is everything. Um, and I do think as well, like for managers, it's control, isn't it? And you look at this, he strengthened no one outside of championship followers, no one really knew who Mick Bill was 10 days ago. And then all of a sudden, he's the lead story on Sky Sports News, he's the lead story on the BBC Sports page, he's in the page of The Athletic. And then, because he's going to go, and then to do something which is unheard of in modern football and show a bit of loyalty and stay, all of a sudden it's like, well, and the team are top of the league. And, all right, he hasn't got that big pay rise he would have got if he'd gone to Wolves, but he's now, people know who he is now. And his profile has risen on the back of not getting a Premier League job, which is kind of the antithesis of what everyone thought would happen. You go to a Premier League job to raise your profile, and he hasn't. So he's a very smart guy in that respect. But he had he gone to Wolves, you've got a club that's recruitment seems to be done by a super agent. There's a, you know, a very Portuguese style squad there. Um, where's the control? What, who is running the club? What's he got? Where's the QPR? His strength is, his hand is strengthened. He can speak to the owners and say, well, I showed loyalty to you. You need to back me in January. But also the training grounds being built, that's come along. He spoke about, you know, the pride in, he'll have in moving into there and, He's always tweeting pictures of coaches that have come to visit him at the training ground. And it, it's very much his team and his squad. And had he gone to Wolves, he might not have had that. He could have been out on his ear in 10 months' time. Whereas at QBR, he can build something. He's seeing it. And there's a good chance if QPR don't get promoted, he's gone to another club in, in the summer. But if QPR do get promoted, he's it's on his CV as the man that kind of took QPR up and look at this great young coach that, you know, all of a sudden people are saying this guy could be the new Terry Venables, all this kind of stuff, that, you know, comparison with Terry Venables and what he did at QPR. And he, he's come out of it really well, you know, in the eyes of QPR fans. He's now idolised because I can't remember the last time I've seen a ground, three quarters of the ground, singing the manager's name for 15 minutes at QPR. Office. It's been a long time since that happened. Maybe back in the Neil Warnock days, possibly. But... Yeah, he's come out of it really well. He has. And and good for him for staying. I think, you know, there is a good young team in there, I think. Um, and as you said, he's he's persuaded seven players to come and join him and come and play for him and to walk away from that. I think it'd be pretty difficult, wouldn't it? You know, things are different in the summer. You can walk away and sort of go, well, it's a fresh end of season, fresh start. But um, as he said at the time, he's only 15 games into his career. He really hasn't done anything. But... You know, his star is certainly on the rise. Yeah, like I said earlier, very admirable of him to say that, that he's, you know, seven, I think, whatever, 15, 16, whatever games, how many games his manager isn't enough to tell how good a manager is. And, he, you know, he said that himself, which is true, obviously. But, yeah, I mean, those are kind of my thoughts on it as well, Ian. I think, like, obviously, like Kev, you said, it would have been, like, easy to go for the short-term Premier League, you know, get your wages, quadrupled, whatever he was going to get there. That would have been very easy to do and understandable in a way but when you actually look at it long term and you look at the situation at Wolves you know they've got a 34 year old Diego Costa is their only fit striker who they're relying on for goals who's not fit to you know play a full 90 minutes in the Premier League um, Ian you mentioned about the control there that's a really good point someone I hadn't actually thought about but you know I think this QPR team has got a real shot at going up I think you know they've got a real sorry to get a bit hopefully not exciting you too much Kev but you know there's a really good team in place and I think he's looked at the bigger picture and he's thought stay here um you know carry on what he started rather than going for the first Premier League job that comes up and you know he's he's backed himself you know he's been confident in himself to see well if I do a good job then the opportunity will come again in the future which you know I mean you look at Graham Potter before he went to Brighton you know I think Swansea only came 10th so it's not like he got Swansea into the playoffs or you know got them promoted or anything he doesn't. I don't think he has to take QPR up to be in the frame for for bigger job, big jobs again when they come up. Um, I think he, you know if he can put a style of play across, which he's certainly doing so far, and they can have a good season, then there's no reason why he can't go managing the Premier League in the future. Which is obviously he hasn't said is is a name for him, but you know obviously we'll be hoping and QPR fans will be hoping that he ends up in the Premier League with uh, with the club he's currently at, and that's how he gets there. Um, and you know, like I say, you need good players to be a good manager. He's not. He can't go into Wolves and wave a magic wand and suddenly get and start scoring goals again when they haven't got a striker who's going to do that. So I think he's done the right thing, to be honest. I think he's been very clever the way he's looked at it long term and thought, 
you know, turn down the money, which is a big decision. But he's, um, yeah, I think he's he's made the right call for for long term, and he's backed himself to to do a good job at QPR, and I think that puts him in a better position in the long term. But um, we'll I move on to um, Saturday's game. Ian, uh, obviously saw you there. Um, wasn't uh, wasn't pretty, was it? For a lot of it, a lot of pressure in the second half that QPR were put under by Wigan, who were good. To be fair, you know, they, obviously they come up from League One and their goal will be to stay in the Championship. They certainly look like they're good enough to do that. But was it a side of QPR that you're quite pleased to see in a way? That sort of resilience, gritty, you know, keeping that, keeping the goal, goals out in the second half to, to win the game? Yeah, I mean, the, the, every win they've had this season, well, largely, has been they're not, they've been sort of hard-fought wins. I mean, you're not going to get a team like Cardiff turn up every week, you know, uh, pity for really. That was a very comfortable win on, on the Wednesday. And, you know, Wigan, they were, yeah, they, they look like they, they're, they're well coached, um, good game plan. Um, I mean, they had plenty of the ball, but really, Senny Dieng didn't really have a great deal to do. It was just more, I think they won the midfield battle after Johansson went off. Yeah. And Rangers just sort of struggled to keep the ball. I don't think the subs he made didn't necessarily work. Um, but you know, sometimes you just got to grind it out, haven't you? Um, you know, as I say in golf, there's no pictures on the scorecard, it just says two, one, three points, move on. Um, yeah, it's it, it, you have to do that. You know, I thought the two centre backs were pretty good, Balagan was excellent. Um, yeah, and you, you know, I thought Dykes played very well up front, I thought he worked really hard, you know, put a shift in both ends of the box. and and I thought Chair played well. I mean, there's that that cross from Chair in the second half. I mean, someone's on the back stick. That goes in three one. It's a different game. You're not. Oh, the one where he like jinx, they cut back. Yeah, in I don't think they were cross, hanging yeah. on for. I don't think they were hanging on for a two one, but they were certainly didn't do it easy. So, mm. um, but yeah, and it, I mean, it would have been very cute oh, to after everything that happened in the week to go and <laughs> in front of a, a decent crowd, not turn up and lose that game. So, you know, it was a good win. I mean, again, you considered, you know, the players that are, were missing as well. Um, that's been the real big thing that Willock's been out for what three games, four games. Um, yeah, and obviously you know, missed some time at the start of the yeah. season as well, didn't he? So when you add it yeah. all up, he's I think they, I, I think that, that they did miss him on Saturday. I think that would have been a good game for him just to kind of, yeah, I agree. Um, put some pressure and just you know create something different to take pressure off the defense, but. You know, he's back Friday. I think, yeah, it's a good win. A good, good, solid win. And you, you move on and, um, yeah, he's still early days, but, you know, you, you can't be better than top of the league, can you? <laughs> yeah, you mentioned it there. That's more positive news to come out of last week as well. As Chris Willock hopefully might be, not 100%, but we'll be back for uh, for Birmingham on Friday in this squad, which is good. I think Beal said that, like, he doesn't want to, you know, risk him if it comes down to, if he's not quite ready, which is obviously the, the right thing to do but certainly that's a big boost because you know hope to have him back for those Norwich and West Brom games or sort of next week so it's a little bit earlier than planned as well which is uh which is nice but um yeah Kev what were your thoughts on the game I, I think like Ian said there that's what I kind of took away from it. it was like lost a little bit of control when Stephanie Hansen went off or like Amos and Dezel obviously come on I don't think really badly but I think that there wasn't really anyone in the midfield that was you know Fields obviously good at winning the ball back but he's not someone who can keep possession yeah, brilliantly it's... himself like Johansson can Johansson does bring a bit of composure, doesn't he? Yeah. On the, on the when he's on the ball and uh, calms it down when you're under a bit of pressure. But fair play, the week enough, well, they were a decent team. Um, it was a tough game. Not, both teams really didn't create any chance. I mean, QPR scored two goals from two corners, which is good because like I said before you can't expect Willock to score well. He's not playing, but you can't expect him. Can't expect, rely on him to score well. He's every game or was chair to score a worldie every game, because ain't really going to happen. So you grind out a 2-1 win from two set pieces. They scored from a long throw. They had uh, hit the crossbar. That was pretty much it. We were under pressure, but Ian said it. Senny Dieng didn't actually make any, you know, saves where, well, what a save was it? It was all comfortable. But you win the match 2-1, you're top of the league, your, your manager stays. And you go in full of confidence for Birmingham on Friday. It's, it's, it's been, it was a great weekend. You yeah, you definitely. Yeah, yeah, like I say, I think that was the big chance when it when um, again it's hit the sort of post and bar with it. I'm trying yeah. to think back and it obviously bounced down. And the refs looking at his watch and you're thinking, is he going to blow? But uh, actually, didn't. But um, 
yeah, like I say, it was, it was a strange game. I thought it was a good game, but like it was like spells of sort of prolonged pressure from Wigan in the second half without, like you say, testing Senny Dieng, really. So, you know, QPR just sort of withstood the pressure, I'd like to say, and I thought um, the defenders were were really good. I thought Laird was a little bit not quite his best, especially in the first half, where he's like running into danger a little bit too much and giving the ball away. But Kenneth Powell, I mean, I mean, what signing he's looking. I thought he was really good defensively as well, blocking the crosses and, you know, Jake Clark Salt continues to impress and Balogun, who at 34, you know, he's I've got a piece coming out of him actually, just to plug uh hopefully around the time this podcast comes out. So uh, go and go and give that a read if you uh if you fancy. But um I mean at 34, you know, he's like Bill kind of said that he was like flabbergasted that he still managed to sign him so late in the transfer window that he hadn't been snapped up by someone else yet. And he looks a really good player. But I mean, Kevin, I just want to ask you about obviously we spoke about Sinclair Armstrong a lot on this uh podcast obviously it's a bit strange because he, he did 45 minutes i thought he was quite quite decent i don't know what you thought i thought he was like he was causing problems like he was i was looking and thinking god i'd hate you'd hate to play against him if you're a defender but then he comes off at half time and bill says after that it's a tactical decision but also that he was like shattered that he was really tired having played also on wednesday and physically he's like you know he, he kind of struggles a bit well it's not it's, it's not, i think he's shattered because of the way he plays yeah, no, that, that's yeah. what he said as well. Yeah, so I was I was watching him very closely on Saturday, and his power and his pace. But every time he does get the ball, it's all about he ends up having a wrestle with the centre half every time, and he needs to. Sometimes you just got the ball comes to you, you hold it, you lay it, and you move on. He's like turning, running, and and to be fair to their centre half, he was as strong as him. Mm. So coming up against a centre, when I played centre forward, if I was coming up against a centre half who were, I couldn't, you couldn't outrun him or you couldn't outstrength him. Someone like Gary Palliser, when I played against him, I, I will always thought I can't run him. He's so quick. He's six foot four, so I can't beat him in the air. What am I, I think? What am I going to do? So you got to come and come short and link and spin, or you got to uh, you got to pray your, with your brain a little bit more with your movement. You know, come off in quicker, lay it. One touch layoffs, two touch spin. I see Claire Armstrong every time he's getting the ball, he ends up having a wrestle with the centre half. And he's consuming so much energy. No wonder he's so tired. He needs to, um, the energy levels have to be sometimes just link the ball and control, link it up, move on again. Not every time wrestle, because you, you, you are going to be absolutely green crackered if you carry on like that. You can't, can't maintain that. That level of um, intensity—it's it's impossible. So, but yeah, he is. It is. I think he's at the moment. I would say a very good last 15, 20 minutes sub because he that that he's a and, great squad member, and he's somebody you love in your squad. Twenty minutes. If you need someone to disrupt and his direct style of play is is a nightmare for a defender. They don't want to be yeah. rest, having a wrestle with him for twenty minutes <laughs> at the end of the game. When they're tired. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, definitely. Not. I noticed in the second half as well. I can't like Ian Wright told a story once. I can't remember who you might have heard it, but like who he was speaking to. Like someone told him like he looked at his shirt and it was all muddy and he'd like someone another player had told him that his balance was all wrong. Everyone else's shirt was fine, but he's covered in mud. Because like you say, he's always wrestling with people. He's always like putting himself and it's great to watch, don't get me wrong. I love it. Like the way he's running at defenders and he's constantly battling and he's chasing everything down. But like you say, it must be really hard and it is proven really hard to sustain that for 90 minutes and it almost looks like he's learning like you say, he's learning you've said this before get kev but he's like learning on the job isn't he he's 19 he come over from shamrock that he's shamrock rovers and he's not played a lot of professional games he's had a handful of games in the national league and you know, he's had a lot of injury problems in his career already despite being only 19. yeah look that's what i was just saying so he is learning on the job and i'm sure the coaches are sort of saying to him look you just got to lay it off and spin and you don't have to you know, consume all this energy. You don't have to, you know, wrestle every time you, you get the ball. Just play a little bit up there as well. But it'll get better with game experience. It'll work. It, he should work that out. And like I said, he's 19, he's coming out. He hasn't, he hasn't been in an academy as in sort of like a the English academy. He's come through like the, the system in Ireland. No disrespect to that, but obviously he's not the sort of same system that they have over here. So it's a work in progress. Mm. Like you touched on Ari, and I mean the defense was a massive positive, wasn't it? And 
Balogun, like, you know, he's keeping Rob Dickey out of the team at the moment. He's 34, but I mean, how impressed have you been with him? And do you think, you know, obviously we've spoken about this before, about the debate of kind of Rob Dickey potentially is someone that if he plays well, QPR could sell on and Balogun's obviously not that, but when he's playing like that, it's like, should keep his place in the team, right? Yeah, he was good. He you know, played very well. I mean, I'm, I don't think he did anything that Rob Dickey hasn't done before on Saturday. That's I've seen mm. Rob Dickey do play like that and score goals and look at the ball. I mean, they're they're they're, they're good. They're, they're very blessed at centre back department. They have got four very good centre backs that can all come in and do a job. Um, you know, you can take two out, put two in, and you wouldn't have a problem with it. It's you know, but we've said before, like these things work themselves out, don't they? Some will get an injury or a suspension or three games in a week. You know, I think he will get his place back in the side. It's but at the moment, um, it's kind of good they're not having to rush him back in. He's had that injury and he's desperate to play now. But you know, it's a, it's it's a squad game. You know, again with the five subs, it means that you can change the system or. You know, so he's still involved. He's still sort of coming on, playing 20, 25 minutes, Dickie. I mean, he's going to want to play 90 minutes in the start. But, you know, I don't think at the moment it's a, a big deal that, you know, he's on the bench and Balagan's keeping him out. And he, he got the, you got to earn the right, haven't you? And he's done nothing wrong. So he probably shouldn't be dropped. But, you know, it will, you know, I wouldn't be too upset that Dickie's not starting at the moment. I think, you know, eventually yeah. he will. Um, just touching on, on, on Armstrong, it's interesting what Kev says because, you know, he, he, he needs a bit more. He's not refined at all, is he? There's no, there's no kind of. Um, it's almost chaotic watching him. He's just arms and legs and elbows. I love it. It's I, great. I think I mean, it's great. Yeah, it's you know, great. He, Cardiff couldn't live with him in that first half. They were just struggling. It was, you know, but Wigan he, he didn't look as good. But I mean, I think I mean Harlan's the main man in the minute. But you watch Harlan play. He does the simple things so well. He does everything right. He holds it up and. You know, he's got the strength that he showed in his goal against Brighton where he just knocked the guy off the ball to score. But he doesn't use his strength all the time. That's part of his game. He kind of answers on needs to work on that as well. So it's not just about you know barging players out of the way and using your pace. But, you know, he, he needs that kind of exactly what Kevin said, just to learn the basics a bit better and just hold the ball up and lay it off. And, you know, he's desperate to score. He's trying so hard to score. That's his thing. You can see, you know, he's... And his interview last week was great, really enthusiastic and sort of funny the way he was talking and, you know, worried the Dykes have missed the penalty because everyone would forget about what he did to get the penalty or that. That was, I thought that was quite amusing. And, you know, it's great to see, you know, you want to see smiley face on the football pitch and he's obviously enjoying himself. But, um, yeah, he's definitely a 20 minute off the bench for me. He's, he's not quite ready to start, I don't think. But, you know, but he's done well. He's done well. It's... It's a long time since QB. I've had a player to ball over the top, pace and power that can, you know, trouble defenders. It's, you know, it's another it's another string to their bow, you know. But you've got Roberts to come back as well, so they're they're pretty blessed, I think, at the moment. They, they, they you know, in that department. Um, but yeah, say, we always say you're only one, two injuries away from being in trouble. So, um, yeah, something they lacked last year, wasn't it, with Armstrong and that that sort of pace? Um, so it's good that they have got that option. But like Kev's, uh, like Ian said there, Kev, like. You know, Harlan's obviously like the epitome of this, but it seems like, and you'll be able to speak to this as a striker, a lot of it is about, because obviously Armstrong's got the physical attributes to be a very good player, but it's about how you learn to use them. Is that what he's got to do now? Because like Harlan, like I said, is the obvious, like he's got every physical attribute you'd want, but he knows how to use it. Like he doesn't run around exhausting himself. He makes the runs that he knows he's going to get the ball or could get the ball. I mean, he said it right. The Harlan, I don't want to talk about Harlan because this is a cute goal. <laughs> But he does the basics like so well, and that's what. If I was Sinclair Armstrong, I'd be watching him. So watch, and it's, you can do as much coaching and this. But sometimes, if you actually just go to a football match and watch someone, a player, and just say, "Right, well, I want to, I want to watch. I'm watching him. I'm going to see what he does." And you can learn so much. Get the ball, lay it, spin. The Sinclair, if, if you're if you're the opposition and it's 15 minutes ago and you see him coming on, you're like, oh, God. <laughs> it's perfect, isn't it, for the last 15 minutes? He's like, oh, this boy's going to just run, keep running in behind. Because the last thing a defender wants to do is run that way facing his own goal. They hate it. And if you've got someone who's just constantly doing that and you've got to run with him, you're like, oh, God, this is a nightmare when you're, like, a bit tired. But, um, yeah, just... He's, he's, he's a young lad. He's... 
He's got a lot to learn, but he's got the physical and powerful attributes, hasn't he, of a, a, a premiership player. He's got their, them physical attributes, but he has to learn the game. Yeah, and it will, I don't think it will happen. If he, I don't think we do much to um to calm the Sinclair Armstrong hype train. Are we? We're having a Harland Sinclair <laughs> Armstrong yeah. comparison conversation, but anyway, we're not comparing the two. We're just saying, you know. He can learn a lot. I mean, every all strikers can learn a lot from Haaland the amount of goals he's scoring at the moment. But um, Gabe, what do you think about the what I asked Ian there as well about the defensive rotation? And because I, I think you said like you think when Dickie's fit that he should play, but obviously Balogun's playing very well at the moment. And I mean, like Ian said there, obviously you got Jimmy Dunn injured at the moment. It's kind of worked out so far, and like Balogun's obviously thirty four can't play three games in a week. Dickie's been injured, Dunn's been injured, Clark's out there. You know, they've all been injured, but now sort of. You know, if Dunn comes back and they're all fit, Beal's got a bit more of a, a good problem there, hasn't he? Because they've got you know, four good centre-halves, which is a great thing to have, obviously. I think balladin has been excellent. I thought he was excellent on Saturday, man of the match for me. Mm, uh, scored as well. I think, look, I know I said about Dickie should come back in, but if you're playing very well, it's hard to drop someone when you play when they're playing that well. The one thing which Clark saw has an advantage on everyone is left-footed and gives you that balance to play left side centre half. So he's got that a little bit of advan um, advantage on on everyone because the others are more right foot, aren't they? But those two played Saturday; they were excellent. I can't see how they can change the team for Friday. But for me, you got to play those two again because they had such good performances. But like you said, Jimmy Dunn's got a couple of weeks out. He'll be coming back, raring to go. Um, and I'm sure Rob Dickey is absolutely desperate to to get back in that starting eleven. So, look, it's good competition, isn't it? I mean, it's better than having no 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 one there as backup. So, you know, whoever training well, whoever the manager thinks, you know, uh, to play against Birmingham. But for me, Balogun and Clark sort of deserve to play on, on Friday. I wonder yeah, if I'm... on Friday... Sorry, Dan, I wonder if on Friday if he... Goes to a back three if Johansson's not fit. Just because I don't think either Amos or Dezel kind of reinforced their case to start when they came on. Mm. Um, although Dezel's done okay, he did play pretty well against Sheffield United when he played a few weeks ago. So but I do wonder if he wants to go with a back three and just have um, Irabunam and Field, isn't it? It's the two in the middle and the wing backs pushing on. Um, he, wants, he, wants to, he wants to play Dicky. He's bringing him on. He's giving him sort of. He's not giving him like two minutes at the end. He's bringing him on and sort of playing for 20, 25 minutes. You know, and he has said that you know, you know, I rate him. I want to play him, but you can't really drop Balogun at the moment. But would you change the shape after you know your top of the league? Change the shape because I know it's it's a difficult one. And I have a chat with my mates on the way home, and he said we should go for a three at the back. We should do this, and I'm, we're talking about, it and I say. You go to a three at the back on Friday and you don't get a good result and everyone turns around, why did he change the shape? Mm. You know what I mean? It's Because it's, I think the four at the back, they've, they've done well playing four at the back, haven't they? It's well, good to be adaptable though as well, isn't it? Like, it's, that has done well, hasn't it? So, <laughs> If you can play two shapes well, that's a massive thing just to have just, as well, isn't it? You just say, oh, well, I want to accommodate Dickie, so we'll go to three at the back. I don't think, I don't think that would be... A, I'm only saying just if your Hansen isn't fit and doesn't play, mm. would you consider forfeiting a, a midfielder to, to go through at the back to accommodate him? But if you're missing arguably your most kind of influential centre midfielder, would you would you ponder changing it for that reason? Um, tough, tough question. Tough you know, question. And if, if Willock's back as well. But what is wrong with your Hansen? Is he. he got, uh, he got a, a, a glute injury. <laughs> yeah, a lower buttocks. High. Uh, what did it, Bill says? Oh, that he said it was it was uh, high up in his lower buttocks. So I'm not. You're kicking a bum. <laughs> I'm not sure how high we're talking, but yeah, he's at his it's, ass basically. It's from that challenge. <laughs> it was from that challenge on yeah. Saturday, wasn't it? I was yeah, saying. yeah, oh, yeah. Knee didn't that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I mean, hopefully not too bad. It might be a bruise or something. Chain very pleasant, but you know, <laughs> I can understand why he come up with it. But yeah, we kind of touched it there. I mean, I was going to ask you guys what, uh, you know, Birmingham on Friday, how you'd kind of what, what you'd want to see Bill do. I mean, Ian, do you think, um, is that a big thing for you? Like, if you're handsome, play, stick with the four. If he's not fit, then sort of go with the three. Is that how you'd play things if you were Mick Bill? 
yeah, I, you, you, you probably go as Kev said. If it ain't broke, don't 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 fix it. Um, again, you know, hopefully Willock's back on Friday. That gives him, you know, options up front. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, they, they seem to be covered quite well in all positions. My only, again, we, I, I'm racing yeah, over old goals yeah. here, just at the back yeah, positions yeah. where you you'd worry, but you, you've got plenty of options. I mean, um, you know, we have sort of talked about squad depth before, and you look at it, and it's you've got Taylor Richards now kind of coming on and playing a role. So you've got guys coming back fit and the squad depth is kind of there in every position bar the two fullback spots. So, you know, they're not in a bad position really, are they? You know, if someone comes out and someone comes in, you don't feel that fearful about someone not being able to do a job. Um, but yeah, I mean, would you start Willock on Friday or would you have him on the bench and coming on? Do you think it's how fit he has done it? I think, like, I think I he comes that. off the. I think he's on the bench personally. Like, if he's ready, I, I don't think he throws him straight back into the starting eleven. It's uh, tricky those hamstring injuries. It's got yeah, hundred percent. Honestly, yeah. don't you've got you, you've got a really tough week coming up. You, see, you play the Friday, then you've got you know a really tricky trip to Norwich on the Wednesday. You know, and you've got West Brom at home on the Saturday. Um, I know West Brom are struggling, but they're they're in a false position. I mean, that isn't an easy. That's a, that's a tough week. Topic of games coming up, so mm. I guess the manager, you've got to be thinking sort of three games ahead of where you are. I mean, you obviously focus on the game in hand, but you know, so I might be inclined to. to... I'll be safe from the bench, and then hopefully in a good position on the pitch. Hopefully winning and bring him on for twenty minutes and getting back into it. Yeah, would you go same as Kev? Do you think as same as? Would you keep the team the same? Because I think, like Ian mentioned, Taylor Richards there. I think he's someone that's knocking on the door. I know he's only had like brief spells here and there, but you know he's someone that they're really excited about when he come in. And he had a really good run up the pitch at the, right at the end of the game on um on Saturday and like won a foul in the opposition half. I think he looks like someone who could come in and do a job. Yeah, I would say Taylor Richards will might start ahead of Sinclair mm-hmm. Armstrong and sort of if if Johansson's not fit, sort of that sort of extra sort of midfielder then go with two out and out strikers which I'm quite happy with because you don't see many teams play with two centre forwards now and it's, it's nice mm. to see you know and I think it helps Dykes as well because that lone centre forward role is, is a tough gig Yeah, when you're up there on your own battling two centre halves and, and what Sinclair Armstrong does do gives Lyndon Dykes a bit, of a, bit, a bit of a breather where he Sinclair Armstrong goes up and battles for the ball and wins headers and does a bit of the donkey work, whereas it's Linda Dykes, when you're up front on your own, is doing that on, doing that on, by himself for the whole 90 minutes. Yeah, so I would say, hopefully Johansson's fit, I would say, is it Taylor Richards? Am I right, Taylor Richards? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tyler Roberts, Taylor Richards. Yeah, Taylor Richards <laughs> might start. And What, you think he'll start further up the pitch? Sort of nearer to, to Dykes? Sort of, it's a little bit like in tandem, a little bit with um, like what Willock does and yeah, yeah. Up the pitch. And yeah. uh have Willock on the bench and Sinclair Armstrong on the bench. And that's a you know, that's a good bench to come on and whatever happens, if you're winning or drawing or you need you need a goal, if you look Nick Bill looks over the side of Willock there, I've got Sinclair Armstrong could cause absolute havoc. No, it's a good shout. I, I I agree. I think keep things the same and then the only one change you'd have is bring Armstrong out for Richards, I guess, could play or I mean Tyler Roberts didn't wasn't in the squad last time, but he should hopefully be back fit as well. And then, you know, Willock's not completely out of the question. So you've got a lot of options there that can come in and replace Armstrong, which, like you said, Ian, kind of speaks to the depth they've got. But, um, I mean, Birmingham, they've obviously got former QPR coach, you know, and John Eustace, who's doing a pretty good job so far, Kevin. I mean, they've kind of outperformed expectations. I know they're in the bottom half, but, you know, a lot of people had them as favourites to, to go down quite comfortably because of the situation at the club with, obviously, the ownership and things like that. But he's doing a good job there, isn't he? What do you think... Uh, be a tough game, but what do you think keep you in this one? All games, all the championships games are tough, other than the Cardiff game last week. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, they're usually a tough game, especially away from home. It's on TV, so you know people want to impress their, their mates when they're on TV. So they probably go up like five or ten percent. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but I, I, I think QPR got a better, better team, better players than um, Birmingham. And they start properly. You win your your personal battles. I don't see how 
why not QPR won't win this game? Because they're playing so, uh, they look confident, look strong, and players are coming back to fitness. Uh, shall I do my prediction? Yeah, go on. What's the score? I'm gonna go two one. I I'm gonna go two one as. Yeah, I, I I guessed as much. Um, I, that was my prediction as well too on QPR. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ian to go last to make it the hat trick of of uh, of wins. Uh, I'm gonna go for a draw in this one. Ah, uh, I think um, he's done a good job there, John. Used this fair play to him. Um, I saw the highlights of their game against Blackburn. Um, they were quite unlucky. They lost two one, but they they looked a better side. They had about twenty um, shots, didn't they? To seven yeah, or something. Like, um, I looked but, when I came on. I've got some family members that are Birmingham fans and they've sort of said that they've been better away from home than they have at home. Um, but, you know, they're, they're doing all right. There's a, there's right. It's been pretty moribund there for a few years at Birmingham now. You know, there's your club drifting into insignificance. Um, but they've got a bit of pride back there now. So I think they'll be a dangerous opponent. Um, uh, Scott Hogan's a, a good player. Always seems to score well at score against QPR as well. Um yeah, I think I, if I get a point up there, I don't think that'd be the worst result in the world. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for a, a one all draw. Yeah, no, Scott Hogan is a good player. They've got um, Chong as well on loan from mm. Man United. He's playing very they well. Signed, they've they've signed him permanently. Oh, they have yeah. signed him permanently, yeah. have they? Yeah, because yeah. they had him on loan before, didn't they? But, yeah, he's a uh, he looks a very good player. I think he's got quite a few assists already this season. So, he's one to watch out for as well. But, uh, but yes, we'll see. Yes, it's probably a good job you did. You didn't make it the hat trick, Ian, because you know what our uh, our previous record of all going for wins doesn't work out too well, has it? So, uh, well, it's worked out a bit better this season, I've got to say. But last season was uh, we'll, we'll, we'll quickly just, forget uh, about that one. Just a quick one, Dan. Um, just yeah, go on, mate. Um, Ian, can you explain what Mori pund means, please? M misery. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one. What was the one that he oh, did? Uh, the other... On Alan Partridge show. <laughs> <laughs> that's another one for your list to add to the word that you used a couple of weeks back which yeah, has escaped one? me now can't remember now can't Gone. Remember. it was very good though yeah keep them coming think, yeah word of the week, <laughs> yeah, word of the week. <laughs> think of one that's a new feature i'm sure that everyone listening will love to uh love to have that included uh, impre very impressive vocabulary. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, let us know what you were. Uh, I'm a fan you... of the Smiths. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, if you do enjoy this podcast and you're watching on YouTube, please do subscribe to the channel, uh, leave a like, and uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you're listening, wherever you listen to your podcast, uh, make sure you follow our feed um, to get all the, uh, the latest episodes uh, delivered straight to you. And we will be back with another episode very soon. Thanks for listening and watching. <laughs>